All right. We're live. Still just the three of us. Shoshana has the wrong Zoom link. I'll send her a new one. <laughs> oh. I do ask people to tell me in advance. Sorry to be late, but I was just planting trees. <laughs> I was really wanting to say that, obviously. <laughs> was it on the right street or? Yeah, I, are we re we're recording right now, right? We're recording, we're live, yes. <laughs> I planted some maple trees. Nice. Yes. And they're enormous. They're like 14 feet tall. It really took it oh. out of me. <laughs> yeah, that's a, were they being bald and burlap or? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sarah, do you want to let Julian and Ellen in or should I? No, I've got it. Okay. I don't know why they're using participant links. I mean, well, public, um, public links. Ellen was saying that they keep. They don't getting... send me an invite. The town yeah. never sends me an invite. So this is the only way I have to enter the meeting. Hello, Vice President. <laughs> uh, Vice Chair, I guess it is, sorry. I thought Shoshana was coming right in. I just sent her a new link, but. I can take hours while we wait. Do we have enough for a quorum? We do, right? Yeah. Like it. Okay. So why don't we just begin? Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm just going to announce that the webinar is being recorded, um, and uh, you'll be able to view it on the town website. Um, they usually get posted on Friday afternoon. So Friday evening. What about Friday afternoon? That's when they post it on the town website. Oh, okay. 
All right, so we'll do ours while we're waiting for the last people to come in. Sarah? Two. Hmm? Three? Two. Two. Bennett? Um, five. Okay, Ellen? Two. Julian? 18. How much? 18 for the two 18. months. Shoshana said four. What does that mean, four? Hours. Four hours. Oh, oh, so she's here. Okay. I get it. At first, just said four. Okay, good. She must um, be this person who's a call in um, who I can't promote to panelists, but I gave permission to talk. Okay. So she somebody must else from who's phone. in attendees, too. So. Oh, I see. You couldn't. Yeah. So she'll stay as an attendee, right? Okay. I'm going to uh, hide the participants and uh, share my screen with the agenda. Um, we should next approve the minutes. Oops, where am I? Not what I want to share. Sorry about that. Um, Ah, there we go. No, it's still not wanting to share. Aha, can you guys see that? Yes. Make you bigger so I can see you. All right. Um, any announcements? No public here, I guess. Just us chickens. All right. Can we approve the July minutes? Any changes to it? Thumbs up if you want to approve the minutes. OK, the minutes are approved. Uh, ben, are you taking minutes? Um, uh, I, today, I'm a little hamstrung here. I just My wife is about to leave. And okay. I have the kids. If, if somebody else could do it, that'd be great. Um, um, if okay. not, then I'll do my level best. Helen, do you want to try? Um, sure. I think I did them last month too, but okay. <laughs> okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. If Britt was here, we'd assign her as the newest member, but uh, <laughs> she's not quite official yet, and she's not here. So, um, all right. Um, so the chair's report. I have a bunch of things to report. Um, first, a question for the treasurer. Did you get $500 from, uh, it would have been from Hampshire Village? So I think you're treasurer. I'm sorry. Um, I wasn't able to get a recent one, so I don't have the most recent one. So I don't. That's not reflected in the number I have. Okay. So the if you could check on that, um, we got a check from them, and it was made out to me instead of to the town of Amherst with the gift tree fund. So okay. they said they sent a new check and it got cashed, but I have not seen any evidence of that. So I just wanted to make sure that that came in. Okay, I can follow up tomorrow and then send an addendum with the, the minutes for, okay. for this meeting. Great, okay, that's good. Um, Britt was appointed, she's not official until she goes before the uh, select board or whatever, the town council, um, but she's in. We had one other woman um, come and interviewed who was also a very good candidate, really interesting, but she probably wasn't gonna be in town she wasn't sure if she was going to stay more than a year or two in town. So we went with Britt. We might have anyway, because Britt's just such a strong candidate. Um, her name was Ju Pong Lin, and I was hoping she'd come tonight, but uh, she will join us for some things. So you'll see her. Um, the Solar Bylaw Committee, that's already on the thing. Oh, Alan, 743 Main Street. They had requested a replacement tree. Is that being taken care of or? Um, I don't know if I received that request. 
743 Main Street? Yeah. They had a tree taken down and they requested, I sent you an email and they sent an email too, I think to you. So they took a tree down and now they'd like to have a new one planted? Is that what you're telling yeah. me? Yeah. And I'd be willing to plant it or a couple of us could go plant it, but uh, if you can arrange to get that uh, happening, that would be great. I'll look into it and check on the email and follow up, make sure. Great, thanks, okay. Um, we got two people interested in watering now that the drought is over, but uh, Adrian, uh, you know, who's part of, has been part of the group, but hasn't, not an official member. She was contacted me because the bangs trees were dying of the drought and wanted to know about if she could organize watering. I was like, yes, you can, so just do it. But uh, anyway, I don't know what happened with that. And then this woman, Lori, um, just, today or yesterday offered to water at um, Groff Park, the trees there. We had planted a tree in front of her house. She's a proud tree owner of Amherst Public Shade Trees. So um, according to her email. So Alan, I just wanted to, I wasn't exactly sure how to tell them to respond. Yeah, so we water those trees regularly. They get watered weekly um, when they need it. Uh, so would it be helpful to have a private group doing that? You know. And you don't have to water those trees? Uh, it's the trick. trick is how they're going to get water to the trees. They're not near water. So that's always the trick. Yeah, I think they, need, was... they need to bring eight, about 18 gallons of water with them per tree. Um, huh. so. OK. Um, I can, t I, can um, I saw the email. I can you know, follow up with them, with her on that. OK. And while we're on, let's um, talk about the drought a little bit. Alan, if you can give us an update on how it's affected things besides the fact that we didn't plant last month or this month. Yeah, so the drought has been pretty hard on a lot of our already sort of marginal trees, especially the sugar maple trees. So, and uh, any tree that really doesn't like droughty conditions. Um, so a lot of those big sugar maples that have been, you know, struggling with low growth, um, we're, you know, going to see a pretty rapid decline in the next couple of, over the next couple of years of those trees. Um, so, uh, other than that, you know, just trying to water this year was a major task for the crew. Um, we had uh, one, one seasonal slash intern that was working with us on the tree inventory um, and doing helping out with the tree crew. Uh, he spent uh, most of his time watering the trees that we planted this year um, and trees that we planted last year. So um, yeah, we lost a few, but uh, I think most of them will survive. So. Okay, thanks. Um, so the only other thing, um, I think that's about all from my, my report. Uh, Julian, wanna do the vice chair report? Yeah, so basically my main updates have been that I told one of my teachers, Mr. Fable, I believe he lives near you, John Fable, Henry. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, he was interested in our committee. I showed him the community activity form and explained that the next time we have a vacancy that would head to the town manager and he would hear more. I invited him to this meeting and the meeting in October. He said that he could possibly make the meeting in October and would try to make the meeting in November. Um, so that's one update I have. Other updates, I've been emailing back and forth with a few folks just regarding planting and maintenance and how to go through the C-click fix system for those type of things. And um, other than that, I think that's all I have to cover. Yeah, that's it. Good, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Alan, tree warden report. Yeah, so I'm just following up on that 743 Main Street tree request. Yes, I have been in contact with them. Um, it's where we took down the very large, very old sugar maple tree uh, this spring, um, and we're working on uh, doing the tree planting this fall there. So, um, 
far as other tree warden business, um, as you may have heard, uh, beech leaf disease has been found in Amherst. So um, it's not a good thing. It's a nematode that, uh, you know, essentially gets in the vascular system of the tree in the leaf. And uh, over a period of years, um, you know, can kill a tree actually. So um, there's a lot of questions about this nematode and where it's from, how long it's been here. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about it because I'm not actually, you know, um, sure myself um, where the status of this uh, report is on the nematode. I, I think they were saying it is a native nematode, but they're not sure why it's causing problems now. Um, but, uh, you know, you can read up on that. Obviously, it will be in the media and you can look it up. Uh, beech leaf disease uh, nematode. So it's actually found on the Holic Range in Amherst, um, not in town. But um, in other parts of the state where it's been found, uh, there are some pretty heavy infestations. Um, it's a difficult pest to control because it's actually in the vascular system of the tree and it's a nematode, you know, so it's it responds very differently to um, insecticides. So they do have some treatment for it. But um, I might be working with a researcher at UMass to do some studies on town trees, some significant town trees, um, to inject them to see if it helps to prevent uh, beech leaf disease uh, from occurring. So we'll see if that actually takes place. Also, um, I Go ahead. just want to add in that I was hiking in the Berkshires and Keystone Arches uh, State Park and discovered it there and a lot of the, the beech trees there. So. Um, and then uh, spotted lanternfly was discovered in Springfield. Um, they're in the process of trying to determine how big of an infestation it is. Um, if you've not seen it in Amherst yet, we probably will. It's a... It's a nuisance and uh, pest and that it multiplies so rapidly and it's a sap feeder. So it um, like aphids excretes everything that it sucks out of the, the tree and they are large and they produce a lot of this um, honeydew. It gets sticky on everything and they, they just mass on trees and there'll be thousands of them on trees. And mm. since they're so large, it um, can be very disturbing <laughs> if you have them in your yard or in your parks um, and they will harm a large a large um, selection of our uh, trees so it's not just one tree it does love ailanthus is probably its favorite tree we don't have a lot of ailanthus in town um, you can also read up more on that uh, spotted lanternfly uh, the inventory, we got a good start to it. We didn't get anywhere near as much as I'd hoped to get done this summer, mostly due to the fact that um, the intern spent most of his time watering trees. Um, so the, uh, I still would like to try and do some training. I'm having a difficult time getting the trainer to coordinate um, with the town. So I'm I have to reach out to um, the individual again to see if we can set up some training opportunities and get some volunteers out there collecting data. Um, I'll let you know how that goes. Amherst History Museum Heritage Street Grant. I have had no progress on that. I haven't put any time into it. Um, I hope to start that planning process this fall, try to get everything in line for a fall kickoff and a spring kind of spring activities and work um, to take place on the tree. So there'll be more information on that soon. Uh, my equipment operator, which left the division about two months ago um, for a job in uh, a highway department, um, that position was filled this week. So I now have a a new equipment operator on my tree crew. Um, he came over from my park side. Um, and so he's been working with the tree crew for years and um, has all the right licenses and 
certifications um, and is a really hard worker. And I think he's going to be a really good fit with the crew. Unfortunately, it leaves a vacancy on my crew on the park side uh, where he was a key player there. So I now have to fill a, a key position um, on my park side as well. So the, those, a job posting went out this week, um, last week, and uh, we'll be interviewing for those in a couple of weeks. So uh, I think that's about it. We, um, obviously no new tree hearings or anything. No word on the Mary Maple. Um, town manager should be making a decision shortly. Right, thanks. Um, Sarah, is there, I guess there's no treasury report that'll come later. Yes. And let me uh, share my screen again. Um, oh, it's not there. Where'd it go? Hold on. <laughs> I'll find it somewhere. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Did I close it? Ah. Agenda. Sorry about that, everyone. Okay. Now I've got it up. Okay. Share screen. Agenda. Okay. There? Good. Yes. Okay, um, so the town tree inventory, you talked a little bit about it and about, um, yeah, about the training. So we'll move on to social media update. Julian, Shoshana, Bennett. Yeah, I can go first. So basically we are, I posted the work day to the Instagram page. I've been keeping all as up to date as I can on the town manager's decision regarding the Mary Maple. And other than that, I think we have three new followers this month. And um, I did get one question about uh, tree um, on the north uh, or on the south common in South Amherst uh, near the church there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I said that there had already been a C click fix request about it. Um, and I'm not sure, has it been addressed, Alan? It's a dying maple. Yeah, there's a dead nori maple um, yep. on the South Amos Common. It has, has not, it's still there, it's still dead. All right, um, All right. We'll, we'll get to it soon. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, other than that, uh, that's my social media update. Um, I have been communicating with the ECAC and the new Amherst Climate Justice Alliance about our push for a town budget line item as well. Okay, good, thank you. Shoshana, anything to add? She said she posted to Facebook and next door about updates on the Mary Maple. All right, thank you. Wait, something else came in. And Bennett's having some child-related chaos over there, so he's going to be in and out. Okay. All right, uh, good. Keep me posted. We know what's going on. Um, town tree tour, next steps. I haven't done a thing. Ellen, have you? No? Maybe we should get together. And uh, I was thinking, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, but it might be nice to do a fall tree tour as well, although my schedule has gotten a little chaotic. So. Um, but at some point, you and I should sit down, Ellen, maybe anyone else, and really try to come up with the brochure. Okay. Yeah. If you want to start, you know, come up with some ideas of how to um, how to lay it out and display it, that'd be great. Is this going to be a printed brochure, or would it be like something you could download on your phone? Oh, probably both. Okay. I'm still old school and don't download things like that on my phone, but... So for people like me and yeah, but for both, that'd be great. Okay. Good. All right, so we'll table that till next month. Um, yeah, if, if we can't do anything this fall, which I think I'm not gonna be able to do, let's maybe we'll do it again in the spring. Okay. An actual walk. Um, it's a nice idea when everything's blooming. 
Yeah, well, I think fall is a nice time too. You know, see it. I, I imagine actually doing this every season. You know, mm. would be kind of cool, but that's a lot of work. So we'll see. Um, all right. Um, town tree tour. Second Saturday plantings. Um, I heard from Bennett that it went pretty good, despite uh, half the committee not being there, or more than half. <laughs> Anyone want to talk more about that? Sure, it went very well. We had the uh, UMass Charg uh, women show up and they assisted us in planting two red maple trees and um, maintaining an additional just mulch and weeding and pruning and that type of stuff on a sizable amount of others, maybe 10 others. Um, and we got done what is, I learned was technically considered the North Amherst Common at one point um, in uh, between Fisher Street and Pine Street on North Pleasant Street. Yeah, good. Anybody else? Good, thank you. All right, um, next up is the History Museum. Oh, no, for October, um, are we going to do, um, it says on the website, we're going to do um, McClellan and uh, Faring Streets. Is that good, Alan? I'd like to, um, definitely Faring Street. Um, okay. The McClellan Street tree work hasn't happened yet, um, though, uh, Citizen on the street there has just cut down uh, about eight or so large spruce trees that are just off the right away there. So the street is going to look very different. Um, uh, as soon as we take down the rest of the trees that are on the street. So um, okay. you'll definitely, McClellan is definitely gonna need it. I guess we could play it by ear and see how um, other removals go. Uh, okay. Uh, it is Columbus Day weekend, I believe, second Saturday. Um, someone want to confirm that? But yeah, I'm almost positive. Um, I'll be there. I, I think. Oh, I may not be. Well, no, I think I should be there. So hopefully, uh, most of us can make it. If you can't, let me know. Um, and it might be good to uh, Julian. This might be your type of task. Um, to go knocking on doors on the street and say, hey, we're doing a planting and uh, come join us. On McClellan or Fearing? Well, at least Fearing, but um, maybe okay. talk to Alan before yeah. you go. Sure, and I'll head over on Fearing and do that, certainly. And I know we had discussed, I have a friend on Woodside Ave who mm. noted that his street had a few large trees cut down. Um, so I walked over there and spoke with a few of the neighbors and stuff. They said that if it's possible to do it this fall or next spring, that would be great. Yeah, that was supposed to be the planting for um, last oh, Saturday. So yeah. we yeah. will definitely get to that. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. And that is a uh, long weekend. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And Alan, do uh, you think we can do a second Saturday in November planting? I mean, we might be able to. It looks like the temperatures are going to be pretty warm. Uh, long range forecast calls for pretty mild temperatures. So maybe we could do uh, Woodside Ave then, tentatively. Tentative. If sure. it's too cold, we can do a work day or or call it off. Yeah. OK, so that sounds like a good plan. Um, Great. And then it's not too soon to start thinking about locations for next year. So drive around, look at the town and let us know your best uh, location. Okay, the History Museum, Alan said, does anyone else have anything to add on that? No? And then the Mary Maple, um, we don't know the outcome yet, but I think, um, I know I've been thinking a lot about like how how that came down for us as a committee, and we approved the removal of the trees. Um, I think we need um, we need some letters to the editor explaining our position a little more. Um, really, 
you know, I mean, maybe, maybe it doesn't help. We, there was, you know, letters to the editor about us and about the treaty. So I think we need to sort of respond to that and figure out, and I'm not sure how to do that. If somebody would, has, go ahead. I would tend to agree. I noted at least five or six community members asking me personally what, why I made the decision to abstain. And at first they seemed sort of skeptical once I explained it to them they understood and if put in the same position probably would have done the same thing but just sort of that fact that a lot of the community doesn't understand why we voted the way we did how each person voted and why that is i think that would be something that's important to explain to an extent yeah i i would like to know why you and henry abstained from the vote um i did not know that was even an option for us yeah and i didn't Feel it was particularly helpful to the decision, so um, I'd like okay. to I'd like to hear from both of you about that choice. Sure. Do you want Henry? Do you want to speak? To you that? go first. Okay. So I personally abstained for one of three reasons. A is I wanted to help the public understand that I did listen to their comments. I did respect their comments. I understand what they have to say and I take what they have to say very seriously. Um, I felt like a yes vote would not convey that to the public and rather a no vote would convey that I did not trust in what Alan was putting forward with the facts that the tree was not in good health and could not survive this type of construction and was likely to die in the coming years anyway, um, soon coming years three or four, apparently. Um, so basically, I understood facts on the two sides of that and felt that an abstention would have been appropriate position there. I also assisted in leading the meeting. So to not appear as if my leading of the meeting was biased towards one way or another is another reason I chose to abstain personally. Um, and Oh, I guess those are my two main reasons. The third reason was just that I felt as though it was important to take a step back from the committee and allow committee members to sort of step up and take their positions rather than following in my role or Henry's role. That was just my sort of take on why I abstained. I hope those reasons make sense to you. Um, but feel free to ask any questions. Yeah, actually, it's, my reasons were pretty similar. Um, I, I think in retrospect, maybe I should have said no. Um, I support taking down the tree, but with that much public response and people being that upset, I, I wanted to acknowledge that. And I didn't feel like I could say yes to this, even though I think that's the best choice because of that. But at the same time, yeah, I didn't want to say no, I don't know, I, I could have said no, I guess, but I, I didn't want to not support Alan and support what I think, support the, com, the North Common Project, which I think is a great project. So um, yeah, so I thought that was my way of sort of siding with the people and the community, but not, not strictly saying no. But in, in, in retrospect, after we got grief in the paper and everything, I think maybe I should have said no. So, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing your thoughts. Um, like I said, I just didn't even know an abstention was an, an option and I was a little taken aback. So I appreciate hearing your your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, we're in a um, an interesting position. We don't have authority. We advise Alan. He usually listens to us, not always. Um, and our our charge is to support street trees and to encourage the growth of the trees in Amherst. Um, and when we vote to allow a removal, as, as useful as that is for the town and for even for our committee, in this case, it would save us money that we could use for other things. But um, if our charge is really to support the trees that are here, then to allow a removal is is tricky. And I think we have to be cautious about that. So, yeah. I mean, in the past, when Nani was on the committee, she voted 100% to save every single tree. And that didn't feel right. 
other people on the committee have voted to remove every tree because it's like, well, yeah, this person wants to remove the tree for a good reason, or Alan thinks it's best, you know. So um, we're we're in a, we're in a tight spot in that way, and there's strong feelings on both sides. So I've I've in my maturing as a organizer and as a as a someone who thinks about these things, I've I've come to accept that the middle ground is best. So Shoshana, Shoshana wrote, I voted no because I knew it would be, it would go to Paul anyway. And I wanted the people to know that we listen to them and fight for trees. So yeah. So, anybody else want to speak? Actually, maybe we all should speak. It might be good. Sarah? I think that unless we have a personal conflict, um, it's our duty as elected officials to have a yes or no vote. Like, I, I don't know, I think abstentions are for uh, if if you're non-biased in your opinion, like when mm -hmm. some, of, some of the tree removals we look at, I've designed the plans for because of my job. So then I abstain because I, I'm in a conf conflicted position, right? Um, okay. But I think that, I don't know, like we're a public committee, so there's not really a place or it's not, and it's not our place to talk offline. But I think that sometimes having more candid conversations about the, the positions we're going to take and why could be something beneficial to have prior to an official vote, because I hear what you're saying, but I also like, you know, Henry and Julian, um, but I think that we, these are hard decisions and we have to make a choice. <laughs> and um, we, it's important to come down on one side or the other of the line, despite how difficult it may be, um, unless you really have a, a conflict where you're, you're unable to be unbiased. Um, uh, so, so that's why I voted to approve the removal because ultimately at the end of the day, as the person I am, I think it's the right thing I want to fight for all of our town trees, but I also want to think long term about all of the trees in our town and the future of trees in, in Amherst. And I think have you know sometimes you have to cut down trees to plant new trees. Um, so that's why I voted the way I did because I felt like I, abstaining was not doing the town or the tree committee true service um, in my position. Despite, despite how much I wanted to, <laughs> um, so so that was my vote. Thank you, Ellen. Do you want to talk? Um, yeah, I mean, I I, I stand with um, Sarah with everything she said. Um, I I it was a very hard decision, and um, it was an uncomfortable decision, <laughs> um, but. A lot of it for me, uh, perhaps because I didn't grow up here, I don't have these childhood memories of the Mary Maple and the sentimentality that a lot of people do have about the tree. Um, but I thought about the recent projects the town has done at Kendrick Park and at Groff Park, the new dog park, which I was very much involved with. And I, I feel the town's doing some amazing things for 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 the community and I had to put some faith into this new plan um and um I, you know I've been impressed with these other three recent projects so I feel that they will um do right by this new one and um and I don't know I I believed what Alan said so that was that was my reasoning Oh, and safety. Great. Safety was a big one, too. That's great. That might be a useful letter to the editor about us, you know, or about your position on it. Um, what you just said was really well done, well spoken. I agree. Yeah. Bennett, are you on? No? All right. So that's everybody. Thank you. Um, does anyone have anything else to add? Alan, do you want to add anything? Um, I, you know, obviously I'm not a voting member of the committee. Um, I appreciate um, the committee's 
uh, respect for my opinion. Um, you are there to, you know, take public comment and listen to the public and, you know, take that public feedback and, and try to come up with a, uh, you know, a, a motion, a vote, a plan, you know, to uh, recognize what the public is saying. Um, and that's a difficult thing to do, um, especially when you can often have very different sides to, you know, a, a discussion. So um, it's not an easy decision for me either. Um, and that's just the position I'm in is what I'm supposed to do is take it, make it a public, a public decision uh, that might be very unpop unpopular. Um, and uh, I'd say this is probably a very unpopular decision. <laughs> a lot of people aren't really happy with it. Um, I think there's a lot of people who are okay with it and an even greater number of people who probably don't even know what's going on. So they you know, don't care one way or the other. Um, I do, you know, I do believe the project is going to, you know, significantly improve the North Common for the next several generations or more. Um, and the North Common is, you know, sadly run down um, and is in need of uh, an upgrade. And the tree, as I've stated, um, is not, you know, uh, long for this world. It's going to become structurally unstable in a, a very short time period. Um, this drought did not help um, any of those trees, especially the maples on the North Cone. The lindens are a little more uh, hardy there, but the, the, um, the maples just don't like it. And this drought is going to impact them significantly. So um, we'll see what happens going forward. Um, and there's you know a discussion going on now whether the Mary Maple whether to hold a merry maple lighting event, if to use the smaller merry maple um, that's been used in the past as a new merry maple. Um, so those dis discussions are happening now as far as what, what's going to happen uh, if the tree comes down, when it's going to come down, um, all that. So more information to follow. Okay. Any last thoughts? I would just say I appreciate what Sarah and Ellen said and looking back on it, I probably actually would have leaned more towards voting yes if um, I had not decided to abstain. And I do hope you guys can understand why I would lean to vote yes if I didn't abstain and why I abstained in the first place. Yeah, it's very helpful to hear what your rationale was behind it. I wanted to ask you right then and there, but obviously I couldn't. So um, <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay. All right, so let's move on. Uh, new members, I, as I mentioned, Britt is, will officially be a committee member. She was approved by Paul Bachelman and uh, uh, I wish she was here, we could celebrate, but anyway, um, we'll see her next time. Um, whose term is up next year? Does anyone know? Actually, I can find that out pretty quick. Well, there are three years, right? Yeah. Yep. So I believe I'm up. Okay. Uh, I actually have it here. So let me just look real quick. 2021 are approved, so. Ellen, looks like your term expires in 2023 and Sarah. That went quick. <laughs> well, we hope you will stay on. Uh, <laughs> um, I can't find you guys now. Uh-oh, I'm gonna stop sharing. See, there you go, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, I'll share again. So. Um, Oops, so then I can't do that yet. You go to look at something and it's, uh, yeah. Blended minutes, piece. there we go. Okay, share. 
Okay, there we go. Yep. No, you guys disappeared though. Uh huh. Okay, everyone's back. We're back live. Um, okay, so town budget line item. Uh, ben had sent me an email. He had heard from somebody who said the town of Irving has a $30,000 line item for trees, budget line item, and was wondering why you know, we can't in Amherst. So. All right, I heard from Shoshana, but let's finish this. Um, anyone else want to say anything about the town budget line item and what we can do for to really keep moving forward with this? Is the Irving, maybe Bennett has to answer this, but is it for planting new trees or is it like Alan's budget that's just for um, removal and maintenance? I don't know. I could look, but then I'm probably going to lose you guys again. Okay. So actually, I mean, I'll get rid of the agenda. So sharing is pause, so maybe this will work. Um, oops, there we go, we're there. Um, I'm gonna have to go shortly because it's uh, bedtime at our house. Okay. Um, but I do have something to share about the library trees. Okay. Um, I don't know. I believe I forwarded this link, but it was quite a while ago. July 1st, the um, library got schematic designs from their architect and I have them up right now. I can share my screen. We can see the trees that are being called out to remain in the plan. Okay, well, I stopped sharing, so. Um, so here, this is Amity Street. And these architectural designs reflect the new design, but in the front here, it says existing trees and plantings to be retained and improved. So nothing to be cut down there. And then in the back where the large trees are, it looks like the one, two, three, four of these large trees are to remain. Um, I believe there's a small one here that's to be cut down. And then I'm not sure what other vegetation, Alan, you might notice if there's something missing from this plan, um, but it looks like these four large trees are to remain in this uh, schematic. And when I was looking at that, um, there was a different, different page I was looking at, I think. Um, it looked like one of the oaks did come down over there, but um, I could be wrong. Um, I also may have been looking at an older plan, I'm not sure. Um, the construction you know, impact there is what's really important. So if they are to remain, you know, what are they doing to um, protect the root zone of those trees? So, because those roots go all over that area, so. Okay, um, so I, I have a contact with the library committee, um, Alex Lefebvre. So if we want to work with them about protecting the tree roots, or if we have any questions or want to um, invite her to our meeting or anything like that, I can reach out and set something up. I don't know if, if this is enough to answer the question about the library trees and we just wanna stay abreast of it, or if there's any kind of outreach or um, collaboration that the committee is interested in doing. Yeah, I would, um, I would, I would love us to do as much as possible. Um, maybe we should hold off until we see if with the new, <laughs> the new budget numbers, if it's actually going to go through, but if it looks like it's going to go through, I think it would be great to meet with them outside and see, look at the trees on the ground. And I, okay. that, would be, that would be very useful, I think. It was about, I, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Julian. Okay. I was about to just ask whether if they did not end up going ahead with this plan and just did renovations and or just did repair work rather than expansion work, um, that would not pose any threat to the trees. Is that correct? Are you asking me? Yes. I'm not sure. I, I would assume it would have less impact than an expansion would, yeah. but um, 
uh, to Alan's point, we would still have to see a selective removals plan um, to see what trees protection was going to be put down for any construction work. Um, Thank you. That's great. That's really helpful. Okay. So yeah, um, keep yeah, us abreast and- I'm we... happy to be the contact person, but in all transparency, I'm not staying fully abreast of every, all the developments. So if somebody else wants to let me know when it would be appropriate to reach out and set up a meeting or something like that, I'm happy to, to do it. I'm just not totally on the level with um, all of the things going on in the town. So um, just putting that out there. If anybody else hears anything and then thinks it's a good uh, time to set up a meeting, I'm happy to be the contact person, but I'm not totally aware um, of the, the timeline of, as this project develops. I keep up with the, um, you know, with the Amherst Bulletin and stuff. So I'm pretty much aware of what's going on with that. So okay. I will keep that up. All, All right, right. Thank I'm you, Henry. Share my screen one more time and then read something from. Um, Oh, you have to stop sharing. Did you stop? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Now I have to find out how to get you guys back. Oh. Why do people disappear in this thing? It just goes to the sidebar for me. No, it doesn't. Okay. I, I'm back. Okay, good. Um, I did get a text from Shoshana. That's not it. That's not a cricket either. Um, Shoshana wrote, All right, maybe I'll wait till that's done. <laughs> Hurry up. That's my partner's phone, so she's grabbing it. Okay. Shoshana wrote, I'm about to be spending lots of time away. I can stay through March. Zoom meetings will be continuing through. Oops, so it just disappeared. I don't know what happened. Oh, okay. anyway. Hold on. Uh, so, yeah, so she'll be able to be on Zoom, but she's not going to be in town very much. Okay. Okay. Um, so anything else on the town budget line item? Will we pass that? No? All right. Connections with Stockbridge School? Alan, you had reached out to someone. Anything new on that? Um. I mean, other than the internship we had this summer, is that, I'm not sure what you mean by connections and stuff. Well, we, uh, Julie and I talked to a couple people from Stockbridge School at the uh, Tree Warden and Forest's dinner, and um, it felt like that would be a, like to have them come to our meetings for them to be, for us to be involved with them and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can, um, I can reach out to uh, one of the Professors there and see if there, you know, if there are students interested in, um, you know, sitting in on meetings and stuff like that. So. Or even the professor come to give a little talk about it would be helpful. Okay. Great, thanks. Uh, Northampton Road. No Shoshana, updates. No updates. Shoshana, have you been continuing to take pictures? And I'm sorry, I have to go. All right, thanks, Sarah. Bye, sir. Have a good night. Good to see you guys. Bye-bye. Shoshana says, not since pre-project. All right, um, it'd be good to keep photos coming so we have the before and after to compare. Are you able to do that, Shoshana, or are you out of town already? Okay, she says, good, thank you. Um, Library Trees website update. Bennett, are you on it here still? All right. Complete streets, state level initiatives. I'm going to be speaking, I believe, at the next Tree Wardens dinner. Is that true, Alan? Yes, it's October, October 12th or something like that. It's on my calendar, but I don't have my calendar handy. Yeah. Yeah. I plan. Um, you were the. You were also going to try to get another community, I think, to shake committee to talk as well. There was some. Oh, okay. I'll I'll reach out. Thirteenth. I'm going to be attending that. I could speak if you wanted. That's great. Maybe we can talk about what we're going to talk about and do that. Sure. Um, I'll reach out to uh, a couple of the tree committees. Yeah. Great. I mean, we have a half an hour. Uh, you'll be up first. And uh, so it need to be concise, you know, kind of 
rundown of what what yeah. you're doing and um yeah i don't probably have i don't have a half an hour worth of stuff to say so i'll yeah that'd be good all right i'll reach out to another committee um good um significant tree ordinance sarah left before she said anything but i don't think anything's happened with that solar bylaw group julian yeah so basically the solar bylaw working group i attended three of their meetings and they are currently working on um mapping doing like aerial mapping of areas where solar could be added i know there was some discussion about below the power lines, which they couldn't do because of maintenance access. And basically they were mapping areas, including the high school parking lot, et cetera, where solar could be added without cutting down trees and that they were gonna plan on including that in their draft of the bylaw, but that they hadn't started drafting the bylaw as of the last meeting I went to. Okay. So hopefully that will continue, but- uh, Now we're done. Yeah, well, I like just I like to add in, um, you know, all this discussion of solar. Um, it would be really nice if Amherst participated in a community-based solar project, so that you give homeowners the opportunity to put solar panels, say, on the high school parking lot, um, instead of cutting trees down around their house, um, and they can net meter back to their house. So. Um, other communities do it, uh, gives people who don't want to cut down all the trees around the houses an opportunity to have solar net meter back to the houses and gain all the benefits of having solar with not having to cut down the trees. So um, I, it seems to fall in deaf ears with everybody I talk to. Um, and if anybody wants to help push that concept with, you know, Town Council or the committees, energy action committees. Um, the next meeting I go to with uh, the Solar Bylaw Working Group, I will bring that up to them. And the ECAC meeting, not tomorrow, but next Wednesday, I'll also go to that and bring that up with them. Great. Thank you. Yep. Do you know what community solar is or do you need more information? If you could send me a little blurb or something, that'd be great. But I generally got the gist that it's like a community um, solar panel, say, in a neighborhood parking lot or field or at the high school that has individual um, electricity providers for the homes in that area and the folks who use that electricity. I mean, it's done in a couple of ways. You can do a, um, you can just have a project and say, hey, if you, if you, you know, take your solar money uh, and all your solar credits and all that stuff and end up paying, you know, 15, eight, whatever thousand dollars. You essentially put that money into that project and they, they install the solar panels, they install the meter and, you know, um, you get the electricity and you get the benefits and all that. Um, there are multiple ways they can do it. Um, and. Uh, I can send you a link uh, to look at that. That's great. Thank you. That is great. And thank you for volunteering to do that. All right. Um, anything else? We've finished the agenda. Um, I, I just wanted to add, Henry, I did receive a call from, uh, and I think I talked to you about a gentleman at Colonial Village um, who was very upset with the uh, number of trees being cut down at Colonial Village. Um, and uh, I repeatedly told him that yeah, I have no authority on private trees. Property owners can cut down trees on their property if they want to. Um, and uh, recommend they talk to the you know, inspection services, uh, possibly the wetland administrator, because there might be some wetland area over there. Um, but he kept calling me back and he got very frustrated because I wasn't doing anything. Um, but, uh, you know, again, so it's, you know, no authority, uh, significant tree ordinance might have had some play there on private property. Um, again, I was not able to reach out to the property owner to find out what their plans were. From what I understand, they are talking about planting new trees, 
Uh, they took down a lot of white pine um, that had been planted originally when the Colonial Village was built. Um, but uh, it was just a you know very frustrated citizen who felt there was no no action being done, and all these trees are being cut down. So. Um, yeah, I, I called him. I had a long talk with him. Uh, it was hard. He was upset and I couldn't offer more than just to listen to him and say, I really understand what you're saying, but we, it's private property is not much we can do. And I talked about how we want to have a significant tree ordinance, although I don't know if that would help these trees, but, um, you know, he, he calmed down after a while and, uh, it, was, it took a while to get him off the phone. But, um, Would it be of any help to possibly do a planting in that area on public property where the trees would be protected by the law? Well, we've done plantings actually even on the private property along okay. the driveway going through. Um, yep. And they don't really take care of the trees, you know. Um, right. Yeah. We could yeah. possibly encourage him to say we'll plant trees in the public way and you could help maintain them etc maybe that's mm -hmm. a way of channeling his frustration to activism yeah well we did i think we've planted all the trees we can in the public way both on um belchertown road and on southeast street okay um, yeah. and i've gone and pruned oh. some of those trees um well, some of them most of them are doing pretty good Great. Yeah. All right. Anything else? No. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, Ellen, if you can get me those minutes uh, soon, and then I'll put them out to the group. Yeah. Bennett, sorry you missed. Shoshana, I'm glad you could listen and text in. So that was good. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys next month. Stay dry. It looks like the thunder is coming now. Yeah. So, it's getting yeah. dark. Yeah. All right. Bye, Thanks, everybody. everybody. Bye. Thank you.